Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to episode number 22 of The Bargain Bandit. I'm Stacy, and today's date is November 6, 2012, which makes it election day. Yay! I uh, majored in political science in college. I love politics. I love the, the, the numbers game of politics. You know, election nights are really exciting for me. So after I record this video, I will be glued to my TV all night just, you know, staring at election numbers. So it's kind of exciting. Uh, but... For those of you who've never tuned into this show before, what I do here is I go over items that I have recently sold on eBay. I acquire these items through a variety of methods from thrift stores and yard sales and estate sales and sometimes off the retail clearance racks and that sort of thing. You know, occasionally I'll buy something off a of Craigslist. So, and then I sell them on eBay and uh, usually for a pretty good profit. And so I go over several items like that. And then I'm do adding a new segment. Woohoo, a new segment. The Q&A segment didn't work so well. So the segment that I'm going to be adding now is called my shout out. And I'm going to be shouting out to another YouTube person that I personally watch and that I learn things from so that you might be able to enjoy them as well. So that'll be coming at the very end of this episode. Stay tuned for that. And without further ado, let's get on with what have I recently sold on eBay? The first item I'm going to talk about is a honey pot that I picked up a few weeks ago. It was about this big, had a wooden stir, was blue and gray, had like a patchwork pattern, and a bear painted on it. It was hand painted, had cra hand crafted. The woman told me she picked it up in Portland. It was a nice little honey pot. Now I don't know anything about honey pots, and I didn't know anything when I picked it up, but it was interesting looking, and I tend to go with my gut a lot when I'm looking at interesting looking items. And so this one, I just went, you know what? I'm going to pick this up. She only wants a buck. It's not a huge risk, and I might be able to make something off of it. And lo and behold, I did, and it didn't even take me that long to sell. It was up maybe about two weeks, and I do fixed price in my store for most of my items because most of the stuff I sell does not have a high demand. And I can talk about, you know, auction versus fixed price at a, at a later point. But most of my stuff like is not high demand video or board games are generally you're looking for one person that um, wants a specific board game there's not going to be a lot of uh, there's not going to be a bidding war generally and I, that same was true of the honey pot I felt so I put it up as a fixed price and I it sold really quickly A couple weekends ago, I took a chance on some shirts, a couple Ralph Lauren's and a couple Perry Ellis's. One was a 3XLT and the other three were 4XLT and I have sold the 3XLT shirt. I haven't sold the 4XLT ones and I bundled them all together in one group and I'm wondering if maybe that's why I haven't sold them. So I'm going to probably split them up pretty soon and sell them individually instead of trying to sell them all together and I'll probably sell them at auction like I did with the 3XLT so I'm gonna switch things up a little bit like that and as far as auction versus fixed price here's my general rule if an item is going to have some demand to it at least seven or eight people out there that you think might want it you know you, you that there'd be at least that many people looking at it and going maybe then an auction might be a good thing because you might get a little bidding war you only need two of those people to go boom bidding war if the item has a low demand, I don't think it's going to necessarily sell in seven days. If it does, it's a total fluke. And uh, and it, you just don't think you're going to be able to get enough interest in it to create a bidding war. Fixed price is the way to go. It's generally at least cheaper to list fixed price than it is to, sh to list in an auction format, especially if you're subscribed to the premium store like I am. It's only five cents a listing to list fixed price. You're going to pay a little bit more on final value fees, but unless the item is really expensive, that's, that's really not noticeable. So that is my general rule of thumb with fixed price versus auction. Low demand or, yeah, just low demand generally. Do fixed price. If you know you can create an, an interest with it, there's enough demand for it that there might be a bidding war. Auction is a better way to go. So anyway, the 3XLT Ralph Lauren shirt did sell, not for as much as I was hoping to get, but I put it at a price that I would be happy just selling it at, and that's what I'm going to do with the other three too. I'm going to split them up. So I did, I did get two bids on it, <laughs> um, and in this case, I was just doing an experiment, and you know the shirts did sell. If I have them at fixed price, they might not sell as quickly. So I'm just going to do. There's an interest in shirts for sure. There's a high interest in them. If you put them in auction, you might have a better chance of selling shirts with, with a high interest. And like I said, I got two bids. So there were at least two people interested in it, but no bidding war.
Last episode, I talked about a vintage Bible that I sold, an old 1940s Bible, and I sold another one of those vintage Bibles. So bi vintage Bibles are definitely good pickups, and I have a pretty good idea now that I've tried to sell different kinds of Bibles, exactly what to look for in the future. And this one was a Catholic Bible from 1951, very nice. The condition could have been better, but it was still, the, you know, the, the leather was cracking a little bit, but otherwise the interior condition was fantastic. It had one inscription in it, and then it actually had like a family section in the back that I didn't know about until the person who was interested in it messaged me and asked me if there was anything written in that section, so I went and looked like a family, what do they call those, um, the genealogy family Bible portion of it, and it was completely blank. So a priest actually bought the Catholic Bible, which makes sense, you know, the people who would be interested in Catholic Bibles would include people of cloth, people of the cloth, so it's kind of neat to sell something to a priest, and it was a nice Bible, so, and I sold that one for a little bit more than I sold the last one, it was a little more valuable. Another item I picked up a few weeks ago is a gravy bowl pewter set from Wilton Armital, Wilt or Wilton. It was nice. It was, you know, a little gravy bowl. It had the little tray underneath it. I know that Wilton is definitely a brand to pick up if you're going to pick up anything. I try and pick up cake pans if they're cheap enough. <laughs> um, the cupcake pans don't seem to sell as easily. I've got a couple of cu cupcake pans that haven't sold, but my cake pans generally sell pretty quickly. And... Uh, I have a serving tray that's Christmas themed that I'm thinking, you know, now that we're heading into Christmas scene, season, that should sell. And then this, this gravy bowl actually sold really quick, like it was up a week and it sold. So it was a, it was a good purchase and I didn't pay much for it. So that, that's always a good thing when you buy something super cheap and you're able to get some money off of it. A few weekends ago, I picked up some promotional glasses that for the NFL. They were mobile glasses from the 80s. They were the New York Giants. I was managed to pick up four of them. They had five, but the fifth one was not in the greatest condition, so I just left that one on the table and took the four that were in really good condition. Uh, they were. It was from this estate sale, and it was their last day, but they weren't willing to discount things that were already priced underneath a dollar, and the glasses were priced at 75 cents, so I was kind of on principle, not wanting to buy <laughs> these glasses. I was just like, well, if you're not going to discount, but then I thought about it, calm my, down, calm my brain down a little bit and like, you know, whatever, you know, they, they want to keep the glasses, they want to take them with them. But then I'm like, you know what, 75 cents a glass, I know I can make profit on these glasses. So I bought the four glasses for $3 and I bought a bunch of cards from them as well. I got over myself, but you know, it is kind of, it's something that, that we as pickers do kind of have to watch our attitude sometimes. And it's not like I was visibly giving him an attitude. It was just an internal thing in my brain where I was smiling on the outside, but inside going, you asshole, you should be discounting stuff unless you want to be stuck with it. Cause nobody else is going to come buy your shit. It's the end of the day and it's the last day. <laughs> <laughs> that, internally, that's what I was saying. <laughs> but I had to check my attitude for the profit, you know, because I, I knew I could make profit off of it even at the price they were asking for. So I, I popped on them, and I'm glad I did. Being NFL season, things sell pretty well for NFL-related items. I sold a Cowboys hat, and um, I sold these glasses. I haven't actually bought that much NFL-related items. So the stuff that I have sold, or the stuff that I have bought that's NFL-related, though, has sold pretty easily. And these are no exception. And the person has already got them, so they arrived unbroken. So yay! And uh, But I'm really careful with my shipping. Seeing as I'm the board game queen, and I, I need to get a crown that for this is board game queen and I know that's a self-titled title I'm the board game queen to myself <laughs> uh, but nonetheless seeing as that my primary business is board games and the, you know this is an issue an episode about what I sell I thought I should include at least one board game although the other items I had I thought were pretty interesting which is why I included them but I do sell a lot of board games most of my board games are not that interesting I sell them anywhere from like nine dollars to fifteen dollars you know, I don't spend a lot on them, I don't make a lot on them, but I do sell quite a few of them, and it's my it's my bread and butter. So I thought I would include at least one board game, and this one I actually did. 
a little bit of an interesting thing with it so I can talk about it a little bit. So I sold um, three board games in one and this is a little trick I do when I get some games that maybe aren't worth that much like for example kids games. I put them together into one lot and I actually can make a little bit more per game that way than if I were to sell it individually especially when you count in shipping fees um, you know, and all, all the eBay and PayPal fees that you're going to pay on shipping. If you ship them to one place, it's much cheaper. So you end up making more money doing it this way. So the three games I bundled together were Shoots and Ladders, Monopoly Junior Disney Channel Edition, and Taboo for Kids. All kids games, all great games for anybody who has a child between the age of, say, 8 and 12. These are good games for anybody in that age range. So I put it up for $24.99 with free shipping. And the three games together and actually somebody locally bought it like close to Texas so it was a zone one thing which I always love I love selling zone one and what that means is that somebody like in your immediate vicinity so like for, for me living in Texas zone one is Texas so anybody who lives in Texas I get you know super cheap shipping rates I shipped it priority mail so you know it was a really good thing for me because if I had shipped it to say Rhode Island it would have cost probably three to four dollars more to ship these games than shipping it within Texas so because I did free shipping on this item I actually made more money because somebody in Texas bought it so yay for Texas uh, so the the games um, $24.99 with free shipping so I actually made um, you know an okay amount per game after sh fees, shipping, and everything else, I did okay. I mean, like, more than I would have done had I tried to sell them individually. And that's a little trick. If you get some things, like some kids' board games, bundle them up, and you'll you'll do better on them than if you tried selling them individually. Kids' games do not have a lot of value because they're so easy to find. There's so many of them out there. So, Plus, they're not really expensive at the store in the first place. I had a really good weekend, so it was a little harder for me to pick out my top three favorite items, although my tip favorite item was super easy <laughs> to pick out. But, you know, with the other items, you know, I had some really interesting things, so it was a little more difficult. And I was thinking of showing the cross-stitch kit again, but I've shown it so many times, and so I'm like, blah, I'm the cross-stitch kit. Yeah, I got a cross-stitch kit. woo -hoo. <laughs> So <laughs> the items that I got, and I'll start with this here. Um, this is a really interesting item I picked up from a really big estate sale where they had a lot of grimy, grungy, you know, unique antiques that I didn't touch with a 10-foot pole because I don't know anything about <laughs> antiques. Um, they had this. She only wanted $4 for this. And what this is is a series of these really attractive um, prints of etchings by Lionel Barrymore, and it's um, been put through the color foil etch process, which gives the pictures an interesting and brilliant textured appearance. And it came in this envelope, and this woman got them, uh, her husband got them when he worked for this company, Southern Pacific Transportation Company. Um, and so here are the etching, or the prints of the etchings. And this is old boat works, and these are Lionel Barrymore, who's known for his transportation-related um, and port-related, you know, drawings and etchings and that sort of thing. So here is one, and you can see it's got some interesting color on it. Gold, that's the gold foil process. There are a lot of etchings out there like this that just have gold foil on them, whereas this one has a lot of color foil on it. Um, it's actually not really, the colors are not really coming up as good, um, but this one is called Dry Dock, and there's, you know, some definite colors in there. It's at an angle the colors come out better. It's not gold. These have, you know, there's silver and gold in there, but there's a lot of colors too. This one is waterfront. And this one, yeah, you can see a lot of the colors in there. And you see the water. The water's pretty. And then this final one is called Home Port. And it's a man working on a boat there. And you can see a lot of colors. It's just the one that the colors weren't coming up very well on. You can see the do the door is blue and um, you know, there's some good colors in there. That's the, the process, the foil process. So these are um, really interesting. And so I picked them up uh, for $4 for all of them. And I've done a little bit of research on them. And from what I can tell right now, they're not actually worth that much money. Um, but I haven't actually found any of the color foil ones. I've found a lot of the gold ones. So because these are color foil, these might be worth a little... Um, a little bit more than the gold ones, uh, so I, I'm gonna, you know, have to do a lot more research on them before I list them. And if anybody knows anything about these types of things, you know, let me know what you think they're worth. 
Um, but that is my first favorite item from this past weekend because it's kind of cool. My second one is this here. And it is an anti-smoking game that was released in 1981, a bit ahead of its time there, uh, by the Avalon Hill Game Company, Leisure Time Games division of it. And it's a bookshelf game. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's, it, it's a corny game. You know, let, let, let's start with that. It's very corny. Um, and it has, you know, it's got the, the, it's got the square board, but it's got a circular game track and, you know, money. And it's kind of monopoly like but um and it, and the the properties of the 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 things you know this says cruel and uh, my dad was a big smoker when i was growing up and he smoked cool so i knew what those were uh, nobody smokes the name brands anymore cuz they're so damn expensive but you know you've got pukent lurk wince tongue <laughs> wince tongue <laughs> i get that one uh so you got a bunch of different it's really corny it's a corny corny game it's anti-smoking and it's funny and no smoking involved this game will convince you not to smoke so I'm gonna play that with my kids before I sell it although my kids are pretty anti-smoking anti-drug anti all of that like I'm like here have some wine and my kids like I can't drink that they're only 10 and 6 though is that gonna change I hope not so the last item is my find of the weekend it's probably my find of ever it's probably the best thing I've ever found. Um, and it's this thing here. And it's a Game & Watch manhole game from Nintendo 1983 in the box in great condition. The box has a little tape damage right here. And then it's one of the, it's got a crease right here. But otherwise the box is in really good condition. The interior contents are in really good condition. The game is actually mint. Um... And I put it in the little plastic that it, it had the plastic in it, so I'm not going to take it out. But the screen has absolutely no scratching on it. The game is mint. I tested it with brand new batteries because the batteries in it were dead. And, the bat and it works fantastic. It's kind of a silly game. The objective with this game is you push one of these four buttons. There's four whole buttons that you push um, to move the manhole to one of these empty slots. And you can kind of see, you know... On the game board there you've got four slots where it's empty and your person has to be able to walk across them without falling and it gets harder uh, almost impossible at level two <laughs> um, or whatever level I don't know if they call it level two or not but I call it level two um, basically you know after your guy goes across the four uh, another guy comes out and is jumping going across them too so you have to like you know boop 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 because you only have one manhole cover so that is the objective of the game and it is I mean it is flawless it has the original instructions everything in here is in really good condition it still has the the uh, the foam I mean it really doesn't even look like it was really played it was just you know put in a box and thrown in a corner and nobody ever played it and then this past weekend they put it in a junk box with a bunch of other junk toys that were not worth broken toys you know not worth anything and they had a quarter on it which is why there's a there was the price sticker was there and I didn't realize when I was going to take the price sticker off that it would damage the box I should have thought about that a little bit more because I probably could have gotten it out without damaging it but you know what are you going to do um, and this is currently up at auction and it had I put it up Sunday night so it still has five days to go and right now it's sitting at hundred and seven dollars and I've had four different people bidding on it I have eleven watchers on it so who knows how much it's going to go for I really have no concept of the value of this thing right now. I thought a hundred bucks was going to be good, but I decided to do an auction on it just in case. Because if I had put it up for a hundred, it would have gone like that. Like literally, I had my first bid on this within two hours of putting it up. So I imagine that it would have gone super fast had I only put it up for a hundred. So I'm kind of glad that I did it for an auction. But that is my best thing I've ever found so far. I paid a quarter for it, and who knows how much it's going to sell for? But it's going to be my highest net profit. I did have to buy the batteries, and the batteries for this are not cheap. They were fourteen dollars for three of them, so I have one still. I'm going to include the two batteries because it is such an expensive item. I'm going to, you know, keep the batteries with it, and I put that in the listing. So I don't know if that's increasing the value of it or not for people. But uh, I'm including the batteries, and you know, if it wasn't an expensive game and watch game, I probably wouldn't include the batteries. Um, but since it is, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm already making huge profit off it. I'll include the batteries. So those were my top three favorite picks from the past weekend.
So my shout out, shout out, uh, for this first shout out is going to be kind of an obvious one. I'm shouting out the Highland Picker. Tracy is my girl in arms. We do a daily show every Monday through Friday at 1 o'clock Central, 11 a.m. Pacific, um, where we just talk about items we're putting up for sale and we answer questions from any of our viewers who happen to be watching us live. Today was kind of a weird one because we somehow got featured on the YouTube homepage and you know what that means, trolls. And they came out a little bit. wasn't as bad as maybe it could have been, but it was still like I was holding my breath every time a new person would come in the room because I'd be like, oh no, another troll. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know how that happened and uh, I'm, I'd be fine if it never happened again, honestly. <laughs> but Tracy's like, oh no, this is good. And I'm like, okay. Um, but anyway, we do a daily show. We, we're calling it the Gal Pickers right now. Uh, the Gal Pickers for sale with Tracy and Stacy. And uh, she's the Highland Picker. She lives over in California. And uh, she does a lot of picking similar to what I do. Um, she sells very differently than I do, though. And that is one of the things that makes her really interesting. Um, and it, really interesting to me and to a lot of other pickers. She was actually on um, Trash Talk and Treasures a few weeks ago for that specific reason. Because she primarily sells through Facebook. And she doesn't really do a lot with eBay she's a little intimidated by eBay but she her Facebook sales are ridiculous I mean she does such a good job with it and for the rest of us we're like how how do you do this and so we're always trying to pick her brain on that you know and and it just really comes down to the fact that she just spent a lot of time building her Facebook presence and that's a really important thing I mean her Facebook page is not just about what she's selling she posts about other things too that are relevant and interesting and, and keep people engaged with her and I think that's a really important thing and something I know I need to do more of when I find the time to be more engaging with my Facebook page which I have which is Krauss House of Cars and Games but anyway you can find Tracy her, her YouTube channel here right here should be right there now I'm gonna put up an annotation right here um, somehow I don't know I don't really know what I'm doing, but there will be an annotation somewhere on the screen taking you directly to Tracy's channel, The Highland Picker. She puts up haul videos, and of course she does The Daily Show with me, so check her out. And that is my shout out! So thank you for watching my show, I hope you enjoyed it. I have, you know, many presences on the internet, interwebs. Um, my Facebook page, which I've already mentioned, is Cross House of Cards. Please come join, because I want to get more of a presence on the Facebook, just like Tracy has. Uh, my eBay store is Cross House of Cards and Games. Go check it out. Maybe you'll find something that interests you. Um, I also have two websites, CrossHouseOfCards.com and CrossHouseOfCardsAndGames.com. And uh, that's pretty much it. So like this video if you like it. I know it's a little long tonight. I'm, you know, I'm a gabber. What can I say? But if you like it anyway, even though I talk too much, please like my video. Please do not hit dislike. It hurts my feelings. I'm kidding. Dislike it if you want. It doesn't. I don't really care. Honestly, dislikes don't affect me. <laughs> um, go ahead and subscribe to the show if you like it and you watch some of my other videos and like those too. I, I appreciate the subscribers. I will be doing a contest. I promise. I know I've been promising this, but I've already gone so long on this episode that I don't want to. Um, I don't want to make it any longer by going into a contest. So what I'm going to do is, I promise. Tomorrow, I'm going to put up a contest video. Um, I'm going to be giving something away, maybe more than one something, to a lucky viewer, and I'm going to do some kind of contest. So check that out on the show, on the channel tomorrow. I will have a contest video. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. Leave any questions or comments you might have for me, and I will respond. And I will say sayonara, and good night, and farewell, and au revoir, and adios, adios. Adios, and uh, have a fun election night watching the results. Go Obama!